Namaste, Officer Scorpios, and welcome to Soul Horoscope Super Scope Weekly Report. My name is Christopher Wateki. I coin myself as the Sensei to Serious Joy because I'm here to help you pie pie for yourself right into your own heart and step in your personal power. If you're wondering why I'm doing it, it's because I don't like all the dark things going on on Earth, and I really want you to succeed. Now, this is a super scope because it's designed to be super, to serve more than one personality. One is Scorpio Risings, two is the Sun in Scorpio, three is Venus in Scorpio. I will have information for all three, and I recommend you watch your other super scope to abstract the information necessary. The more you know about yourself, the more powerful you will be. Now, that said, Scorpios are ready to stand in their power. No shift. It begins with the Sun in Cancer. Believe it or not, the last thing holding you back from stepping into everything are your beliefs. You may be still operating in childhood beliefs, self-limiting beliefs, the first marriage beliefs, past life beliefs, all sorts of beliefs, basically constitutions that don't apply to the matrix you're trying to design. And so it is time this week to accelerate into your true wisdom. Wisdom comes from the heart, not from any study on earth or anyone else. What you know best is right here. Creator made it that way, and it's time for you to listen to only this. More on that in the Serious Joy Farm. But first this week, kind of the highlights. We'll move from step 13 to step 20, basically, and we're going to move grand fast. Finally, the sun will break free of the grand square. What this means in layman's terms is you will finally break free from a major struggle you've had between believing and your thoughts and then faith and reality on the other side. We talked about that in the Serious Joy Farm. We'll talk about that again. But thank goddess, the struggle with your own mind or the arguments with others that you're playing out as an echo of your own mind, because when you argue with others, it's really the argument you're having with yourself, right? That ends, thank goddess, and you finally start to move into full-hearted belief. The other part of the square that ends is the sun squaring Uranus, which happens on Wednesday, and that square has been between your desire to believe and reality saying, "Uh uh-uh. And because reality was saying, "Uh uh-uh, you weren't believing. So you got to get over that issue this week. That's also part of it. But wait, Scorpio, there's more. The sun, uh, Jupiter itself, will accelerate this week. No, I'm not kidding. Accelerate. Speed up. I'm not sure. I haven't had the time because I've been so busy to see why the hell it's accelerating. But I know that it's going through two degrees in a week when it normally goes through one in in over a week. And so we are going to zip through this issue really fast. In fact, Jupiter and the sun won't even kiss in this transit. Someone told me that. I looked it up. Oh, my gosh, it's true. So what this means is you're going to go from I kind of believe to you better ass believe in just one week. Now, something else. Mercury catches up in Gemini. Mercury is your mind, and since the retrograde, it is back in the gutter, literally, the eighth house. So Scorpio has been thinking about sex and drawing lines and where they should draw lines. But because of the accelerated beliefs, I think, too, Mercury tends to accelerate this point. Now, Mercury, I see accelerate all the time because when it whips around the sun, it goes faster. But the point is, is that your mind will race ahead about where your boundaries are. So if you've been like, eh, I don't know how I stand with that person, by Thursday, you're like, oh, I know. You're going to be very clear very quickly. And then lastly, this whole drama queen ends on Saturday night with a full moon in Capricorn, which will be the final battle between you and your own thoughts or you and someone else arguing. It begins actually Friday night, so I'm going to put out a cautionary warning to all those in the Serious Joy Network to be seriously careful. But be careful because this is a very intense moon. It is about breaking free of those mental games. And so the question is, you're fighting your own strength here. You need to resist your resistance because uh, the full moon will literally be that final, I don't know, almost uh, self-dialogue that the hero goes through in a movie. Like, ah, that kind of thing. It's going to be fun. We'll talk more about that in Serious Joy Farm. So coming up, I've got some cool, fun stuff. A serious present from me. No kidding. I have a present for you. And, of course, a Serious Joy Farm after this. This week in Soul Garden 8.0, in our new super blog, Namaste Today section, check out Mary Inchinary. She's a Grandmaster Cancer, and she's back to help you face the final wrap-up of Jupiter and Cancer. Then hop over to Modern Goddess, where we have our guest writer, Jen Jarasik. She's an independent female filmmaker, and she's going to tell you how she steps into her power. And lastly, don't forget, I've got a special surprise in each of the 12 horoscopes, as well as a little survey. All that and more in the new Soul Garden 8.0. Howdy. Welcome to Serious Joy Farm. You're going to find that here I'm going to be a little crazy, just like who I really am. 
because I want to inspire you to step in your inner child and be goofy too. So forgive me if this triggers you, but I think it's super uber important, and I'll show you why right here. Now, uh, here's the deal. This is a little example to show you what's hanging on your serious joy and what's holding on to it. The biggest event of the week is this, a full moon that will go between your beliefs and your thoughts. Now notice death is in the lap of man. What that means is something will die on earth. It is a thought. It is an attitude. It's a way of thinking that's going to die. And on top of that, you have to add the full moon, which is the Mona Lisa here crying like a baby. You might be triggered to have a total mental breakdown emotionally about what you're thinking or in an argument or whatever. You might find yourself extremely passionate and extremely angry about something. And really what's happening is, is you are releasing a whole way of thinking, a whole way of talking, a whole way of being. Why? So you can completely believe in yourself on the other side. Jupiter and the sun are saying it is time for Scorpios and Scorpio risings to believe in themselves 100% without any doubt. And that comes from listening to your inner child, who is an adult five-year-old living in an adult's body. That's the truth. One more thing I want you to see, that's this. This is a grand trine. And this is a little secret formula from the universe telling us exactly what's gonna get you through this week and this is what it is right here. You already know Saturn's been serious about your ego character and today it is time to be serious about being joyful. Your character must be seriously joyful. So you have to be really goofy and let your heart out. Honestly, this is I think the formula. When it comes to self-love, you've got to be very compassionate and very understanding of how hard it's been to be you. That's super important too. And if you do that, if you're really nice to yourself about how hard it's been to be you, and you're really serious about being joyful in your character and expression, your beliefs will shift into a new reality. And I believe you will ascend up the serious joy tree. Seriously. Now, I said before commercial I had a present for you, and that is true. If you come down to soulgarden.tv and look at your Scorpio scope, you will see I have a free video called Jupiter Gets Emotional. I'm giving it away. I'm giving it away. It was an old video, actually, but I'm still giving it away. And it's to help you, so you might take a look at that. And I said I had a serious question for you, and this is it. I am curious where Scorpios, what they were believing. What was emotionally holding you up in your beliefs? Is it that you believe that nice guys uh, always finish last, or is it that you believed you never could be hurt, or you believe no one in your family would, would, would work against you? I'm curious on what the false belief was, and if you share it underneath the horoscope there, the one that gets the most responses will win a free Megascope uh, subscription from me. So uh, it's, it's worth the try, it's worth the share, and for other people, it's worth taking a look at, because this is an issue that will not replace itself for 12 years. You're going to be operating on this constitution. So do the soul work, my friend, and be goofy and live in your heart. All right, I got a quick little wrap up here. Ah, uh, here we are back in the tranquil setting of what I call Wateki Theater. This awesome star-twinkling moonlit environment, you'll see it all over the new Soul Garden 8.0, wherever when I lay down like a magic carpet for you just to chill out, get spiritual, you'll see. There's a lot of cool things at Soul Garden, including the newly remodeled soulmart.me, where right now you can buy a one-hour reading with me and get a free 30-minute follow-up. Now, this is an excellent sale for people who've never had a reading because you'll really learn to appreciate the power of astrology in your life. And if you've already had a reading with me, well, then you know the power. This is a great reading to get to the bottom of an issue and end it for good. Details are all available and a video at soulmart.me in the new remodeled soulmart.me. Also, I've got a class series coming out this summer. The first one's called, So You Want to Be an Astrologer, eh? Now, this course is really designed for you to have some fun. Bring your chart. We dive into all sorts of aspects of your astrology, your astrology, and you'll walk away knowing a lot about yourself. So this one's open to the general public, no prerequisites. You'll love it. If you're interested in going further, the next class is, yes, I do want to be an astrologer. At which point I'll talk about using astrology in your profession. I'll share some stories with you about how I got started and where I got taken advantage of and uh, even reading certain celebrities and things like that. I'm not a name dropper, but in classes, I'll be honest, uh, this is a great class to really figure out if you want to pursue it further. 
If you do, I've got a class called The Art of Reading People. Now this class is open to the general public as well, and I'll share with you kind of how to sum up a person in a moment using numerology, astrology, and psychic ability, and determining am I psychic or not. So there's some fun uh, like little quizzes in there that help you determine where you are and where you're not. Then if you're interested in diving deep, I've got natal chart interpretation, class one, class two, and class three. It's gonna take at least three classes to understand it. And finally, my favorite, the ethics of free will in a reading. You know, the truth is, is psychics get a lot of information, but we don't always share it. Why? Because we don't want to interfere with free will. So this is a fascinating topic and describes a lot of why people perceive to have bad readings or people do have horrible readings, and it's open to the general public too. So all of these are available at soulmart.me and going to be a lot of fun. They're only two hours. They're $49.95, and you can come on your webcam. It's awesome. I love new technology. I love HTML5. Now, if you're still on YouTube, hey, do us a favor and please subscribe to our channel. We do appreciate that. If you're on Facebook, you can like our channel by going to soulgarden.me and you can come to the new shiny penny soulgarden.tv anytime. Don't forget, I've got a little treat waiting for you in each of the 12 horoscopes. I'm so grateful you've shown up for me. I am here showing up for you. I love you. I'll see you in seven days. Until then, live, love, be.